Okay, so I've had a few people comment and ask me, um, you've done stuff with the Wright, you've done stuff with the MT, and you've done stuff with the Toro this winter. What happened to the Walker B? Well, the Walker B, by the end of the season, pretty much when Billy got done running it, because Billy's the only one that usually runs that machine, um, got put into the back shed, and that one is just, it really doesn't need anything, because there's nothing wrong with it. That's a phenomenal mower. And if I ever get rid of it, Billy might beat the hell out of me. So um, <laughs> that one I got to keep. But there are a few maintenance things we need to do to it to get it ready for next season. So the project today, get that thing put out back so that it's not, so they don't have two machines in here taking up room and get the Walker B back up front here. So it's been warm, cold, warm, cold. Oh, see, I finally got my Christmas tree outside. That's about as far as it's made it. But anyway, it's been warm, cold, warm, cold. So the ground's not exactly frozen. It's a little bit soft, but it shouldn't be too mushy. So the plan is to get that tour all back and get that bee up front, so. how dirty this thing is it needs a bath bad she's dirty but billy ran this thing hard i'll tell you what there is uh well let's see how many hours are on it 296 hours this thing had i think 150 160 something like that before this season started so that's how many hours Billy put on this machine this year, or 2019. He put over 100 hours on this thing. And I'll tell you what, I, I found very few people that can run a walker B like he can. You guys have seen it in all the videos. Um, let's watch a little clip right here real quick of Billy running this machine. I know I've posted a lot of footage lately with him mowing and uh, I'm just really, really proud of him. He's come a long way in a very, very short time. He drives this mower around just like I would. I mean, he is no different on this thing than I am. He's just as quick on it. He can make all of his turns really fast without tearing up any grass. He knows when to use a shoot block or when not to use it. I mean, he just uses a lot of common sense. He's really careful, but really good at the same time. It just makes me really proud that he has taken to this the way that he has and that he enjoys it as much as he does. It's It's been a heck of a ride so far and we have 
a lot of the summer left before he goes back to school. I'm probably going to be pretty upset when he goes back to school and I can't mow with him anymore. But then again, there's next year. So he's. Uh, I'm really looking forward to see what, what comes next with him. So as you guys know, this is Billy's machine of choice. Um, he's been on a bunch of other ones and he just wasn't a fan. He really liked that Hustler uh, Super S that we demoed standard. He really liked that one a lot. He absolutely despised the right, did not like that, didn't like the controls on it, didn't like anything about it. He liked the Hustler. Um, he's been on the MT a few times, doesn't like it as much as this Walker, but he does like that one. Uh, as well. I think the box in the back makes him nervous like it does to a lot of people, but uh, as you guys know, we had problems over the year, or over the season with this power shoe, okay, and put it down midway, put it down all the way, bring it back up all the way, so on and so forth. Um, I do have to make an adjustment here. This washer has kind of come out again. Um, that was one little issue. But the main issue we were having was um, we had the control up here. There is a whole stock right there to put toggle switches in. For some reason we never paid attention to that and I drilled a hole right here and put it in there. But every time um, you move this forward control, it was hitting the back of the terminals on the switch and breaking them off and that was the big problem we were having. I did end up going and buying spare motors. I have two spare motors on the shelf, I've explained this to you guys in videos before, that um, all this is is like an old uh, Cadillac um, GMC, like Chevy or Chevy, Chevy Caprice uh, window motor. That's all they're for. Um, so I, uh, I got a couple of them, they're like 25 bucks a piece. You can get them, you don't have to order them from PowerShoot's website. Actually, on their website, they give the exact part numbers. If you were to get it from O'Reilly's, which we don't have one of those around here, or AutoZone, and I think there was one other one, Napa maybe. But it gives you their part number if you wanted to just get it from them. So that's pretty cool. And like I said, it's only like 25 bucks. So I got two of those spare on the shelf, and I have another backup to this switch here, or two of these backup in case they happen. But once we got through that problem early in the season, uh, we ran it the whole rest of the season, never had an issue. As you guys know, this one does have the 56 inch side discharge deck. We like this deck so much and it's so efficient that I went and bought another one. I bought that one with only a couple hundred hours on it used from a guy for a thousand bucks. That was a smoking deal. Um, and I ran that for a little while on the MT because we didn't have to bag and that way we could run both walkers. Um, so that's what that deck is for. But the Walker B, I've been over this thing many times. The only thing that I've done to this machine is I upgraded from the leather Walker comfort seat to this grammar seat. Um, we like the suspension on it, but I've mentioned before, if I was ever going to upgrade seats on a Walker again, I would stick with the leather comfort seats. They are by far the best. The canvas comfort seat, we didn't like that at all. This is nice having this suspension up and down, but the padding on it is just garbage. When I went to GIE, they told me I could order just this pad and this pad, and you can change those out to the thicker, the better ones, and it'd be like 75 bucks to do that. Well, when I got home, I researched it all, and I'm pretty sure they didn't know what the hell they were talking about because it was like $200 to get both pieces, and uh, I just wasn't going to do that, so we just deal with it the way it is. So I upgraded that. I had to upgrade to the longer handles here because you need the longer extension handles when you're running this seat. We put the, uh, or yeah, I put the um, height adjust kit on here. We did the power chute. Um, I took the stock eight inch tires off and put the same 10 and a half inch low pro tires that the MT has. I put the weight kit on the back, which it desperately needed. Um, and I believe that's probably all I've done to this. And then we've just ran it and uh, mostly Billy has ran it. But uh, let's flip this hood up, take a look at this. So like I had mentioned before, this has the 19 horse um, Kohler Command Pro carbureted engine. A lot of people advise me not to get this. They said go with the 23i, the fuel injected. And I figured with what I know about engines and what I know about walkers in specific, 
I'm gonna take my chances with this. And I did, and I have zero regrets. Now I haven't run a 23i, and I know they are a huge difference from what people say power-wise, but all in all, this machine flies. This thing is just as fast, and I've mentioned it many times before, as my Walker Sport X. So it's plenty fast enough. I know it's not as fast as like a ZK, but in my opinion, if you're mowing at full speed on a ZK, you're leaving a shit cut anyway. So, it's plenty fast for what I need to do. Um, and as far as it only being a 19 horse, the reason why I have zero regrets is because it is a gearbox, gear driven, drive shaft driven deck. If this had a deck with spindles and belts on it, there's no way I would buy a 19 horse engine. I don't care if it was EFI or carbureted. And I've been over this many times before with these gear driven um, or drive shaft driven and gearbox decks, they require like anywhere from 12 to 15% of the engine's horsepower to run them. They require almost nothing to run these decks and to run these blades. So it doesn't really take anything away from this engine. That's why it still cuts great even in heavy, wet, thick grass. Even with a 56 inch deck handling all that volume of grass and still flies. That's why. So, and like I said before, I've put it up against um, bigger machines with bigger engines and bigger decks, and this thing did not bog where those did. Again, it's because they're gearbox driven and not belt driven. So, that out of the way, I haven't had any issues with this other than if you guys remember way back, I had an issue with these two belts. There's two belts in here, one of them broke, and the other one was still okay. And I called all over for these things. They wanted a ton of money for these belts and nobody had them. Every Walker dealer had to order them. So I got the belt number and I called Napa. Now, from what I've told, what I've been told, and I haven't been running Walker since the 80s like a lot of people have, but way back when, all Walker mowers used to come with a sticker up under the hoods of them and they would give the gates belt number the cross reference to the walker belts so you could cross reference any walker mower belt with a gates belt so that's exactly what i did i called uh i called napa and i gave them the number and they said yep we got them and they ordered me four of them so i had a backup set for less than the cost of one set from the walker dealer and i think it was like oh you go back and look at that video and find it but i think it was like right around 90 hours 90 to 95 hours that that happened when i put these belts on and like i just showed you we're at about 300 hours and they're still going strong so zero issues there um, I am going to change this hydro fluid because I did it once at 100 hours and I haven't done it since. So it's sitting at about 200 hours since it's been changed. I'm going to change that out. I'm going to put new plugs in it because I never put plugs in it at the beginning of 2019. I took them out. They looked brand new. They didn't need it. Um, the air filter also looked brand new, didn't need it. So what I'm going to do before this season starts, so this thing's ready to go for Billy, is I'm going to put a new air filter in. I'm going to put new plugs in. I'm going to change the oil. I'm going to flush the hydro system out so there's new hydro fluid in here. And I'm going to sharpen and balance these blades. And then that's it. This mower is ready to go again for another season. This thing has been a phenomenal machine. So, zero quorums about this machine at all. I love it. Billy loves it. This thing has made me so much money. It's disgusting. I think total out the door price I paid... I want to say it was just under nine grand, right around eight grand, 8,500 maybe. Um, and then of course I put the upgrades into it. I mean, this seat's an $1,100 seat. Like I said, I don't recommend it. The height adjust kit I think was about 300. Um, the power chute, I'm not really sure what those are. Um, I got that from one of my subscribers. It was almost brand new. He gave me a smoking deal. Um, I put a couple hundred dollars into the rims and tires i think that was actually like 250 or something for rims and tires to upgrade them to the bigger ones and i think it was like 60 bucks or something for the weight kit but uh other than that i can't remember unless there's something else that uh that i said i've done to it but I, I think that's probably about it and that's it that's all i've done to it so um i'm probably around 10 11 grand by the time you're said and done with everything i've done to it plus the cost of the machine but I have zero intentions of getting rid of this thing. Um, even if I did change out of running walkers, 
I would still keep this one specifically. Um, Billy very well might beat the hell out of me if I were to get rid of it, like I said. But I think that uh, this thing is just a moneymaker flat out. It doesn't owe me anything. I don't owe anything for it. And uh, it, it's just a good machine. And I look forward to, uh, to having this part of our fleet this year, just like I did last year.